Anyway, here you go, guys. This is what it looks like after it's all done. And like I said, I'll be going back when uh, it gets a little cooler out. I want to put some uh, boiler liquid in there, boiler uh, water treatment in there. And uh, I will uh, give you updates once we get this thing running as to any other issues up top. But I got my fingers crossed. Well, stop the clock. I thought this video was about changing a convector style radiator valve. Well, it actually is, folks. But that clip was from a previous video I did. I was called in on a job where they were having many problems with the steam system and ultimately I ended up repiping the steam boiler. Now this was sometime in September and we really weren't ready to turn the heat on. Anyway, two weeks ago I got a call from the customer, Mike, he said he'd like to turn the heat on. I went back, turned the heat on, to see how the system was going to ultimately perform. And things were looking pretty good until we got to the second floor radiator, that recessed radiator, and then this happened. So you think you want to tackle a job like this? Well, you know what? Watch the video first because you may have a change of heart. So we bumped that thermostat up, got that boiler running, started pumping steam. The mains got hot fast. The risers got hot fast. The radiators on the first floor were getting warm. The radiators on the second floor were getting warm. Mostly freestanding cast iron radiators with little Hoffman air valves on them. Now, a couple of those valves were spitting, but that's not a big deal because they got screwed up from the previous way the boiler was piped. But anyway, as I was in the front on the second floor, Mike called me to the rear, says, you got to come and watch this. And that's what happened. This radiator must have been full of water. The previous owners must have shut it off trying to stop the steam from coming up, and they trapped water in it. And anyway, the result is I ended up having to change this convector valve, and that's what this video is about. So with the help of Mike, who asked if he could videotape this, he acted as my videographer, I uh, changed that convector valve. Now, I don't change too many convector valves, mostly because people probably don't go inside those cabinets very often to play with those valves, and you shouldn't play with any steam valve. Leave it open, guys, otherwise you're going to cause problems. Anyway, stick around right after the intro, and you're going to see what it takes to change a convector valve on a recessed radiator. They are a pain in the butt. get on that side when I lift up on that mm -hmm. you, you put the pan over here okay. yeah.
trick is to cut it without cutting the nipple. <laughs> That's the trick. Big money.
just have to be careful by doing this because this is steel. Mm. You know, if I really get like gorilla on it. That's all the way over. So this is what people do. They go, I'll control the steam. Let me close it a little bit. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Nobody ever told me that. But I'm telling you now. <laughs> and what if I don't want the heat? Shut it. Guy sent me all the photos of the faucet he wants me to. He wants me to tell him how he could tighten the faucet without taking the faucet out. From Canada. He's from Canada. <laughs> Send me some pictures, guys. You can help me out a little bit.
So there it is, folks. As you can see, changing a convective valve is a little bit of a pain in the butt, not like a conventional valve on a freestanding cast iron radiator. Now, I want to give a shout out to Mike. Mike asked me if he could take some video of me actually making the repairs and doing the valve change out. I said, go for it. I would love to have a full-time videographer. And we turned that steam on. We changed a couple of air valves that weren't working right. I pitched a couple of those freestanding radiators, pitched them back toward the valve to get that condensate to run back and we bumped up the pressure and everything was sounding real good. As a matter of fact, the next day, the following day, I got an email saying that they overslept. Mike and his wife overslept because everything was so quiet, and uh, that's good. Made me feel great. Folks, if you're new to the channel, you may want to consider subscribing. Also, hit that notification bell, but more importantly, hit that like button. And uh, if you're a DIYer and you have disposal to the tools you saw me use in this video, go for it. But for most people, I would say call a plumber in to do something like this because they are a pain in the butt to do. And uh, unless they get them in there right and lined up right, uh, you know, they're going to end up leaking and they're going to cause nothing but havoc. Folks, keep an eye out for one of these two videos that are going to pop up to either side of me. One I chose, one YouTube chose. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one. Stay well. And as always, happy plumbing.